So the prompt for day three was fruit, so I've gone ahead and made a fruit tart here, as you can just see. Why make one piece of fruit when you can do 14? Uh, just before we dive into the actual noodling, here is a screenshot of a node setup. I'll talk about this more in a future video about actual vector displacement. This is, I call it a range mask. Basically it sets a from and a to. And I've got a little uh, kind of a softness fall off slider here as well. Just makes it really convenient. Obviously you don't want hard fall off with vector displacement because you'll get a lot of shearing artifacts. So try and keep your gradients soft around the edges. This just lets you essentially select a band. Um, and I'll talk about this more in the future, but you can see the screenshot of how it's made here. So starting off, I'm using the same scene that I've used for the previous two days, just the, uh, the dark background and the sphere, the round cube. And uh, to begin with, I'm making a pastry base. So I've just flattened off the base, used a map range node to be able to control the bottom and top edge radiuses independently. Um, just scaling the original, the sphere on top. I'm using the range mask here to select a band and I'm using radial array, sorry, radial gradient with a sign so I can create like the ripples along the, the edges there. Another range mask just to move the whole sphere down a little bit. Uh, just so that I've got that slight indentation up around the inside of that pastry lip. Now just planning out the actual fruit that's going to go on here. Uh, in the reference you can see that I've got sort of a cream dome underneath the, the fruit. So that's the first thing I want to make after the pastry. Just so that I've got like a solid base here. Again, just taking a map range so that I've got a bottom and top radius and I'm scaling that top uh, top section down just using the generated Z uh, coordinates. Starting to mask things out now just so that I uh, can sort of contain each independent section so that I can use materials. And you can see that I'm building like a, a mix array here um, and I'm using several different ones for different things like uh, roughness and uh, subsurface and transmission and uh, color. Um, and I'm basically just making this one big group node that's got all of my individual inputs for each of the fruits so that I can set each material independently from the outside without needing to worry about any of the mess of masking out. I can just plug the masks in and sort out all my materials that way. So it's a really quick way for me to do it. This is also going to sort out the alpha because you can just add the masks all together and that's going to be your, your, your alpha essentially for the whole thing. So I'm now just going through and I'm making sure that I've got uh, masks for each part because obviously the whole thing is transparent because I've not passed any masks through yet. Now uh, using range mask to give me the band for the cream. And now I'm using distance so that I can select a point on the surface. There would be a neat way to do this by using trigonometry so that you could actually maintain the point on the surface because we're using a, a unit sphere here because it's got a radius of one unit. Uh, I'm just manually positioning things by eye uh, but that also gives you a little bit of variation in the size of the masks that you get. Um, so I've done the kiwi and I've got the seven pieces of blueberry. I'm now just working out the positions for the three strawberries. Again, just the same process of using the distance here. And plugging that through with a less than, just so I get the mask. Now is the two cherries, exactly the same, just using a less than with the mask. Goes into my big group shader. Uh, I like to keep a little viewport open on the right hand side so that if I view any of the nodes on the left while I'm working, I don't have to scroll out and go back to my main shader. I can just click on that side viewport that can see the group. Um, so I've added all of my individual pieces of fruit now as the masks, and I'm just working out the kiwi, how I'm going to do this. Uh, so you can use a subtract with the same uh, input as the distance, and that's going to give me the coordinates uh, sort of centered on where the kiwi is. So I can use this for a number of things, like a gradient coming up from the middle. In this case, I've used a, a great uh, radial texture so that I can uh, create these, like the sort of the seeds coming out from the middle. And I've put some color on. I was trying to work out whether or not uh, subsurface scattering was gonna work for this, but I found that it, was, it wasn't giving the effect that I wanted. So I decided to go with transmission instead with a high transmission roughness. So it's still got the glossy shine on the surface, but the actual transmission looking through is rough. And I'm using a gradient from the center out so it's not transmissive in the middle. And you can see through it more on the outside. 
Uh, here I'm just creating a little coordinate system so that I've got a ping pong and uh, a gradient out from the center so that I can use um, I can use that to position seeds radially around and I've put some linear light and some noise in to give me the variation. I'm now just sorting out the actual pastry texture just so it's not just a flat color. I've used uh, the separate hue saturation value node on a noise texture because this gives you some nice little hard edges when you use the hue and I've just passed that through a color ramp. Uh, high frequency noise using an overlay so that I've got the um, like those sort of fine details on there as well. Uh, we're dipping into blueberries now. This was a little bit more complex because I needed to work a way of making them essentially spherical from a circle. Um, but I didn't really know which way the surface was pointing and I needed it to be able to point in any direction because I didn't want to work it out manually for each one. So what I've done is I've created a gradient out from the center by using the same method of uh, subtracting the second value of the distance from the uh, the coordinates and that's essentially centering the space. And then I'm using just a, a standard displacement because that's going to push it out from the surface regardless of which direction the surface is pointing in. That's giving me the height and then I'm using uh, another gradient uh, which is a distance gradient and I'm essentially pulling in the side which is closest to the sphere and coming out and then going back to zero as it reaches the middle. I've added an offset as well, just a constant offset masked onto each one of the blueberries and this is going to allow me to move each blueberry independently. Now that I've worked out the system for making things round, I can just copy this exactly onto my strawberry setup. As long as I've got similar inputs, the I'm using minimum and the actual coordinates. So I can just plug this straight in and you can see that this is going to give me the shape straight away and I can use the RGB curve to actually shape the strawberries there. Nice and easy. Same again, just adding the constant offset per uh, per strawberry. I'm using a magic texture with generated coordinates here just to give me the pattern, the C pattern. It's a really good one for that. Um, putting it through a color ramp so I can get the color and also using that on a normal displacement node so that we're pulling in the seeds a little bit. Same again, same process for the cherries here, just making them spherical. I know these are going to be on the back side away from the camera, so I'm not too worried about adding too much detail here. Um, so I've just done the, the shape, pulled them out, and tightened in the base. Going to give them a little bit of noise in the surface, in, in the bump on the surface, which is one of the inputs on my main group shader. Now we're having a look at the, uh, I call it a peach here, but I think it was more like a tangerine slice. Um, the issue that I had with it was that I wanted to, essentially to have a circle that I folded in half and close up the edges. I wasn't able to close up the edges. Um, I'm sure there would have been a way, but I didn't want to spend too long stuck on this bit. So I just folded it in half and ended up rotating it, which opened it a little bit more, but from the camera you do get away with it. And it's it's so brief that it's on there for. So still just tweaking things and adding the constant offset so that we can move things independently. So you can see the node tree is getting fairly complex already, but it's uh, each individual part kind of makes sense as you go through. Um, what I ended up doing was I pulled out all of my constant offsets per fruit. So I had individual controllers for each piece of fruit. And I use these for the animation. So I can set one to be the final position with where it sits on the actual surface of the cream. And I can have another one, another combine RGB. Uh, so it combine XYZ to be a like fly off position. And I can use a mix RGB to essentially flip between them using that mix factor. And then I can just animate the mix factor. So you can see I'm just positioning things here. I need to rotate the piece of Kiwi. So I've used the object into vector rotate and then subtract the object from the rotated. And then we just add that into the coordinates. So I've just done a scale uh, to the mask just so it's only affecting the actual piece of Kiwi. So I can just position that and rotate it manually. Exactly the same here with the peach, I need to rotate it. Um, rotate and position. And then I did the same with the lowest strawberry, just because it was too too much on its side. I ended up twisting it because when you rotate stuff, it's still, it's still going in the world axis, the displacement. Um, so I should have probably tweaked the displacement on that one specifically. 
just tweaking a few proportion things here and moving things out. So you can see I'm sorting out the fly-off vector now that I've sorted out the close vector. So I'm just pushing them out in the direction that I think they should go in just to be appealing, making sure that they disappear out of shot. And then what I'm doing here is I'm, I have hashtag frame in the value node as a driver, so it's pulling the frame number in. Then in my map ranges, I've got them all set to smoother steps so they've got easing. So it's gonna come in slow, fast, and then slow. Um, and I can set the start and end frame that I want the motion to happen through and just set the output to be zero to one. So it's gonna flip those mix, uh, flip those mixes from the fly off position to the final position. I just finished it off there with a RGB curve so I can fade to the sphere as well, just using the same process.